Hey, grade 12s, busy working through the calculus module. We've worked through first principles, finding the first derivative, graph questions, and I'm about to go through the second video of the optimization or maximization questions. So I've prepared two questions just to go through with you. Uh, the first one says the following. The number of molecules of a certain drug in the bloodstream, um, T hours after it has been taken, is represented by the equation m of t is equal to negative t cubed plus 3t squared plus 72t, and t has to lie between 0 and 10. So for 10.1, it says determine the number of molecules of the drug in the bloodstream three hours after the drug was taken. So for a simple two marks, all we are going to do is we're going to substitute 3 into our equation that we have been given like this, and we are going to push some buttons and see what we get. Okay, so let us see, we're going to get what? Negative of something, something, or cubed. I like just getting the format ready, like this, plus 72, like there. And now I'm going to substitute in my 3 into the 3 brackets. Right, and we've got 216 as our answer. So 216 molecules, if you wish to write what we've worked out. 10.2, determine the rate at which the number of molecules of the drug in the bloodstream is changing. So this is important to note here. We are working out the rate at which it is changing exactly two hours after the drug was taken. Okay, so in your minds, you should be thinking first derivative. We're going to find the first derivative and substitute two in place of the variable. So the first derivative, m dash t, is going to be equal to what? If there's our equation, negative 3t cubed, we're going to say negative 3t squared plus 6t plus 72. There is our first derivative. Now, if they want the rate at exactly two hours, we're going to substitute 2 into our first derivative wherever we see a t, and we're going to push some buttons and find the value of our answer. So negative 3 brackets 2 all squared plus 6 times 2 and then plus 72. And our answer is going to be 72. So that means 72 at what? What are we going to use as the units? The rate at which the number of molecules is changing after two hours. So 72 molecules per hour. Right. Moving to number 10.3, it says the following. How many hours after taking the drug will the rate at which the number of molecules of the drug in the bloodstream is changing be a maximum. Okay, important question here. If we're working out the maximum rate of change, remember the number two, they just worked out what is the rate at a certain value. Number three, what is the maximum rate of change? So we're not asking for a certain hour, we're working out the hour. So in this case, we are going to work out the second derivative which, there's my first derivative, so the second derivative, negative 6t plus 6. And in order to find the maximum, we are going to make the second derivative equal to 0, negative 6t plus 6, and solve for t, so negative 6 is equal to negative 6t, making t is equal to 1. Therefore, after 1 hour. Okay, so interesting question. Hope you followed what I did there. We're going to do one more question before we move on. Okay, so the next question which I've prepared for you is the following one. Let me just get my pages in order here. There it is. A cylinder with a height of 2x units is placed inside a sphere with a radius of 5 root 3 units. O is the center of the sphere. Number one. Okay, you're all happy with the picture, first of all. Number one, show that the volume of the cylinder can be expressed as V is equal to 150 pi x minus 2 pi x cubed, if you can't see that. Okay, so you'd notice that in number 12.1, we are heading towards a volume that has no R in it. There's no sign of R, meaning we have to first work out R in terms of X. So... If we look at our picture here, we've got R over there, which is from the center of our sphere outwards to the center of the cylinder to the edge of the sphere. We've got that. There's our radius, 5 root 3. 
and the height of the sphere in, of the cylinder inside is 2x. So if I give you this to consider, if I had to extend this out there, that would also be 5 root 3. Agree? If I had to extend this out there, it would chop the 2x into an x and an x. Now, why would I be doing this? Because if my r value is there, I could also say my r value is there. And what have I got here to deal with? I have got a right angle triangle, which I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the value of r. So, how would I work out r here? I would say r squared is equal to the hypotenuse, which is 5 root 3 all squared, minus the other length, x squared. Okay, so let's just deal with that and find r in terms of x. We'd say r squared is equal to the square makes the 5, 25, and the square cancels the root 3 just to leave us 3, and minus x squared. So r squared is equal to 75 minus x squared. Okay, I am going to leave r squared as r squared and not root it, and you're going to see why. Because if I'm asked for the volume of the cylinder, in 12.1, what is the formula for the volume of the cylinder? Volume is equal to pi r squared times height. So if I've got r squared over here, I might as well leave it as r squared because I'm just going to substitute it back over there. So volume is equal to pi r now becomes 75 minus x squared, and our height of our cylinder is r squared. Okay. So in order to make life a bit simpler for us, I'm going to say pi times 2x and then leave the bracket of 75 minus x squared. Okay? Now when I times that into our bracket, I'm going to get the volume to be 75 times the 2 gives me 150 pi x minus pi 2x cubed, which is very similar to our answer that we're aiming for here. Maybe what we could do is just write it in the correct order. 150 pi x minus 2 pi x cubed. And we are done with 12.1. Okay. 12.2 asked us, calculate the height of the cylinder if it is to be of a maximum that volume. So we've got our volume formula over here, right? And we need to work out the height in order for it to be a maximum. Remember, the height of the cylinder was 2x. So we're going to work out x and then multiply it by 2. So in order to maximize our answer here, we are going to find out the first derivative of our function there. So dv over dx is equal to, right? So if our variable is x over there, x to the 1, we're going to say, okay, 150 pi, and then our x is going to fall away. Then minus Use our shortcut here. The 3 multiplies with the negative 2 to give me negative 6 pi x squared. Right? Now, in order to have a maximum, we're going to make our first derivative equal to naught and solve for what in this case? For x. So 150 pi minus 6 pi x squared. We're going to bring negative 150 pi equals negative 6 pi x squared. Divide by the negative 6, so we're going to have 150 over 6, remember the pi's would cancel, is equal to x squared. 150 and 6, is that going to simplify most of the time? Uh, yes, that's in fact going to give us 25, beautiful number in this case, 25 equals to x squared. So therefore, x must be equal to root of 25 is 5. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. If we wanted to work out the height of the cylinder, our height is 2 times x. So therefore, the height of our cylinder will be 2 times 5 equals 10. And let's just check our units. We're just going to say 10 units, right, as its height. Okay, so hopefully that question also assisted you in better understanding the maximization questions in calculus.